Good morning. So for this episode of Bible Over Breakfast, we're going to be talking about the power of prayer. Now, when it comes to prayer, it can be a little bit of a funny one because, um, you know, we may think prayer can be a bit of a drag. Might find it's a bit hard or a bit boring. You know, your understanding of prayer uh, may come from, you know, your childhoods and uh, you've listened to grown-ups uh, talk to God and, you know, they may, they may say things like, these and thous or some six syllable word that you've never heard of okay but hey relax okay prayer is simply just talking to god okay uh, there's there's an old um sunday school song and it says prayer is like a telephone so we can talk to jesus and i mean that's that's exactly what it is okay it's our way of talking to god about our thoughts our feelings and concerns now, God really does understand modern English, okay? Even the bizarre language um, that's, uh, you know, like text speak and leet and stuff like that. Is leet still going? Is that still a thing? I don't know. Now, you can be totally confident that God hears you when you pray. In fact, God eagerly waits for you to come to him in prayer. It's like he's sat there by the phone waiting for that message to come through. You are his child. He values every minute that you spend with him. So why is prayer so great? Well, number one, prayer helps you to focus on God. OK, it helps you to get to know him better. Now, in the Psalms, uh, it says, look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. So that's a Psalm 105, uh, chapter four, verse four. When you pray, you kind of unplug yourself from uh, the mind of the TV and the internet and things like that, everything else that's going on around you. And it's like you kind of unplug from that and instead you, you plug directly into God. Number two, prayer is intimacy with God. Now, when you pray, you discover what it means to be really close with God. The Bible says that when Moses entered the tabernacle, the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. That's from Exodus 33, 11. That is what happens in prayer. You become friends with God. You become good pals. You become good chums. OK, he becomes this deep personal friend who just loves you unconditionally. And prayer really helps you to see that. P number three, prayer is like a, a virtual weapon. OK, in making right choices. Now, if you if you want to stop lying, pray. <laughs> Praying will add God's power to your desire. OK, if you want to uh, be more loving towards people, pray. And, you know, God's uh, ask for God's help to be um, more patient and more kind to people. OK. If you find that you're lacking patience, compassion, self-control, pray. Anything that you've got going on that you think is a real struggle and pain for you, pray. Just pray. On your own, sit down and just pray. You can be eyes open, eyes closed. It doesn't matter. OK, you can have your hands like this. You can have your hands like this. You can have your hands like this. I don't. It doesn't matter. OK, however you pray, however you feel comfortable enough just to sit there and talk to God. That's how you pray. That is how you pray. Might not be how I pray, but it's how you pray. Now, when we pray, God takes action. So pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for your friends and watch God work. Now, you may not get that result immediately. You may not get that result in the next day. Sometimes God's prayer, answers to prayer can be quick. Sometimes it can be a slow burner. And it's only when you look back on things, uh, when you look back in the future, you'll see, actually, yeah, by, by prayer, good things have happened. You may not have had the result 
that you wanted, but it was what God had in mind. And sometimes when we look back at the bigger picture, it's it can be unbelievable. I mean, a pretty big example would be we had a boy back in my old church who was born very premature and it looked like it, he wasn't going to make it. And the whole church, every Sunday, was praying for this boy. At every house group, everyone was praying for this boy. We prayed for uh, uh, for his health. We prayed for his uh, preservation of life. We prayed for so many things. Now, he did make it. This little boy is now, what is he now? He's now like about seven years old. He does have some health problems because of his prematureness. but. We saw answers to prayer and actually other things that happened behind the scenes, people who never really talked much in church were praying with each other. People that didn't know this boy suddenly had this big connection with him. It actually brought a whole church a lot closer together. Maybe that was part of God's answer to prayer too. So how often do we pray? Not counting grace at meals if we do that. How often do you think you should pray? When is a good time for you to pray? Is it in the morning? Is it in the afternoon? Is it in the evening when you're brushing your teeth before bed? How long do you plan on praying? Five, ten, fifteen minutes, maybe more. It doesn't matter when where it doesn't matter how long your prayers can be a few minutes they can be a few seconds they can be half an hour what's important is that you designate some time and you say right i am now going to pray and you just unlock that's all i've really got to say on prayer It's something that I personally know I need to do a lot more. And I'm going to spend this week purposefully finding time, chiselling out some time in the day. I haven't got a TV this week because it's, it's out for repair. So maybe this is actually God trying to find a way to prompt me to saying, I want you to pray to me more. Here we go then. So have a great week. Remember to find some time to pray. And I hope you have some fantastic conversations with God. That's something for you to think over whilst you have your breakfast. Here's an amazing worship song for this week. If you need something with a good beat that is going to get you out of bed, that's going to get you dancing around the kitchen or the living room, you just need something that's going to get your blood pumping, Have a listen to this one. It's Matt Redman. It's called We Are The Free. Uh, It's from 2011, but it has aged perfectly. Have a great week. Bye.